P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Believe me, you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. And I'm proud to recommend Post cereals to you. So get your mom to put them on the shelf and try them as a favor to me. You know, the town of Indian Junction has been taken over by a gang of crooked politicians. And we've heard rumors that real trouble may break out at any time. That's everything, I think. Yeah? Well, let's not get there and then find something missing. The powder, fuse. How about matches? I got plenty. Okay, let's get going. Everything all right, Hill? Yeah. The street's deserted. Okay. I'll light the fuse. There. That's got it. The fuse is lit, Hill. Let's get out of here. slick job. <laughs> One newspaper won't be printing nothing more against us. Yeah. And the editor of that newspaper may realize now we meant it when we told him to stop picking on us. Bob Noble? Yeah. I think Bob Noble was in the shop when the blast went off, Warner. If he was, he won't give us no more trouble. <laughs> A Paradise Valley rancher visiting Indian Junction sees and hears the explosion. He knows it is no accident. He knows the people of Indian Junction are in trouble. And he heads back across the valley to the Double R Bar Ranch, where he tells Roy Rogers what has happened. We better get our horses, Jonah. Eh, I tell you, Roy, the whole country's gone outlaw since the government done away with horse cavalry. Can't safe no more. With trigger at full gallop, Roy and his old partner, Jonah Wilde, ride straight for Indian Junction. As they approach Mineral City, they see a rider streaking towards them. Whoa, whoa. Hold it, Jonah. Uh, hey, that's Dale, Roy. And she acts like 17 ghosts in the tribe of Apaches was following her. Roy! Roy! I was just riding to the ranch to get you. Well, what's the trouble? That explosion at Indian Junction. Two men stopped at the hotel a few minutes ago looking for a doctor. They said the newspaper office had been blown up. Yeah, we heard about it, Dale. But the owner, Bob Noble, well, he was in the shop when the dynamite was set off, and he's hurt. We have convolutions. We're heading over that way now, Dale. You'd better ride with us. If the damage is that bad, we may need all the help we can get. Take it easy, Bob. Uh, I know who did it. I'm sure I know. Well, I, I don't know who set off the explosion and blew up my shop, but I know the organization behind them. Well, give us all the information you have, and we'll go after them. And I, I can't prove it, but I'm sure the gang is headed by our mayor and sheriff. I figured, as a newspaper publisher, it was my job to wake people up and open their eyes. I printed what evidence I had, hoping folks would see what was happening and get mad, mad enough to fight. You've been doing this on your own, alone? Well, everybody in town's been scared. I don't blame them, though. They got families. Bob, we're strangers in your town. We might uncover a lot of evidence if we pretend we came here to open up a business sometime. Sure we could, Roy. Here, two cons aren't busy pouring gasoline into smelly trucks and roaring airplanes to dicker for horse feed. Well, if we pretend we wanted to open up a gambling hall, for example, we'd find out who the, the bribes have been paid to and where the money goes to from there. 
Yeah, lost my shirt gambling with an infantry squad once. Say, I lost my shirt. My socks, too. Well, don't count on uncovering too much, Roy. The men who control this town are smart operators. Dale, Bob might be safer if you took him over to your hotel in Mineral City and had him stay there while we're after this gang. Sure thing, Roy. Well, you know, my old commander, General Thomas Kenneth Rowe, lost his buffalo hide overcoat the same way. Only he got sore about it. <laughs> and I appreciate all you're doing, Roy. We want to help, Bob. Come on, Dale and Jonah. From here on, we pretend to be gamblers looking for a place to set up business. Once Bob Noble is safe from further harm, Roy takes Dale and Jonah back to Indian Junction. They go to a real estate office and inquire about renting a large store out near the edge of town. Roy states frankly why he wants a store to open a gambling house. The real estate agent gives him the name of another man that he must see before trying to go into business. A man named Phil Warner. All right. Thanks for the information. We'll go over and see Phil Warner right away. What do you think, Roy? Is Phil Warner the big shot of this gang? I can't tell yet. Walk towards your horses. Well, Roy, now that we're opening a gambling house, I just wish my old pal Corporal John Dumphy was around. <laughs> then we'd make some real money. Yeah, <clears throat> he had a great talent for dealing cards. Well, now, wait a minute, Jonah. Mm -hmm. Open a new deck, shuffle them once, and deal himself five aces. <laughs> he, he made enough that way to get diamonds set in his teeth. You're kidding. No, oh, no, I ain't. You want me to write and see if I can get him to come and work for us? Now, wait a minute, Jonah. We're only pretending we want to open up a gambling house. Gambling isn't legal. It's against the law. Mm, now, ain't that a situation? We know that gambling exists here, and so somebody must be taking bribes. We want to find out who. Oh, pretending, huh? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want no diamond set teeth anyhow. I say I didn't want them, I guess. Are we going to see Phil Warner now, Roy? Yeah. It's just possible that he does head up this gang. We'll know for sure as soon as we see him. You say the real estate agent sent you? That's right, Mr. Warner. We talked to him about renting the vacant store on the edge of town, and, well, he said we'd better see you first. Uh, step into the office. Sure. Go ahead, Dale. Thanks, Roy. Well, well, well. Nice office. Soft setting chairs. Sit down. You know gambling is against the law here, don't you? Well, I, I've heard things could be fixed up if, uh, if a man knew the right people. Mm, you did, eh? Yeah. Let's talk plain, Warner. If you're the fixer here, what will it cost to operate without interference from the law? You're awful forward for a fellow who's asking the favor. We're not asking favors. This is a business deal. We're paying. All we want to know is how much and how often. Nothing. What's that? Not one cent. You can't pay us one cent because we aren't going to let you operate in our town. Why not? Because I don't like your looks. You don't, eh? No. Now, get out. Okay. We tried to throw in with you, but you don't want us. So, we'll just have to open up on our own and buck your crowd. You came in here looking for trouble. Now you're going to get it. Stand to one side, Roy. Let an old army man take him. Look out, Jonah. He's all mine. That did it, Roy. Yeah. Well... We're opening up on our own now, Mr. Warner. You'll wish you hadn't. You'll wish it a thousand times. Warner! Well, what are you doing on the floor, Warner? What is all this? It's not what I'm doing on the floor. It's what I'm going to do now. I'm about to kill... You're not killing anybody. Who did this? I did. Why? Alone? Alone. You claim to be the best gunfighter west of the Rockies, Warner. And you let a young buck like this whip you with his fist? I'm not through with him. We're just... A uh, young fella. I think we can use a man with your nerve. Suppose you walk across the street with me to my office. What's over there? Well, as long as you're new here, I'll tell you. I sort of run things in this part of the country. My name's Fred Pratt. Got him. Great. Sure. We'll be happy to talk with you, Mr. Pratt. As a matter of fact... That's why we came to this territory in the first place, to meet the real boss of the town. Here 
here's exciting news for all you buckaroos. It's news of that thrilling and popular club, the Roy Rogers Writers Club. I know each and every one of you will want to join up right away. Why, maybe you'll be one of the very first official members from your neighborhood. Now, in just a little while, Roy himself is going to tell you all about what his Roy Rogers Writers Club stands for and how much fun it is to belong. You'll find out, too, how easy it is for you to join. So, get your pencil and paper and be ready for the big news right after we hear the rest of our exciting adventure. Roy is pretending he wants to open a gambling house in order to get evidence against men who have taken over the town of Indian Junction. He met Phil Warner, the gang's fixer, but Warner jumped Roy and Roy had to knock him out. A second member of the gang, Roy believes he's the leader, came into the office at that moment and was greatly impressed that one man could lick Phil Warner using only fists. He invited Roy, Dale, and Jonah across the street to his own office. There's plenty of opportunity for a young fellow with nerve in our organization. And you've shown you've got it by the way you handle Warner. Warner doesn't look so tough to us, Mr. Pratt. Why, I fought in seven, eight wars, serving under a sergeant with a jutting chin that he used to sharpen and use for a saber. I say, he uh, used Mr. To Pratt, uh, and... you keep talking about your organization. What organization do you mean? You'll find that out after you've been with us for a while. Wouldn't do for you to know too much too soon. But you said something about having me work for your outfit. I'll have to know who I'm working for, won't I? Well, let's just say you're working for me. That satisfy you? Sure, but uh, my two partners, I, well, we usually work together. If I join you, that's the way it has to be. Why not? Well, let's get on to business. Here, here's a list of names. Going to call the roll? Uh, these men operate businesses in the county. Hmm. Our organization collects. Uh, that is, we license these businesses. They're not allowed to operate unless they pay dues to us. I get what you mean. And we've decided to raise the rates. Some of them may not like that. A few might even try to start trouble. But the right kind of a collector won't let them get away with anything less than payment in full. And you think I'm the right kind of a collector? Well, you weren't afraid of Warner. That's good enough for me. Uh, just put the list in your pocket now and go to work. Okay. We'll start making calls this afternoon. All right. Oh, uh, Rogers, before you go, don't be surprised if you notice somebody trailing you. We always watch our men close until we're sure they can be trusted. Roy puts the list Mr. Pratt has given him in his pocket. He doesn't relish pretending to be a member of the gang, but that is one sure way of finding out who the leaders are and what they're doing. Roy, Dale, and Jonah walk out of Pratt's office. They get on their horses and begin riding from one gambling house to another, collecting graft as though they were members of the gang. Represent Mr. Pratt. Is your name J.A. Mitchell? Oh, how much does Mr. Pratt want this month? You're on the list for uh, two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and well, I only paid one hundred seventy-five last month, and the month before that it was only a hundred. Our orders are to collect or report that you won't pay. And you know how Mr. Pratt hates to be disappointed. Oh, he does that for a fact. Well, I guess there's nothing I can do but kick in. You tell Pratt, though, that if it keeps on like this, I'll go broke, and he won't be able to collect anything. Ah, doggies, Roy. Did you hear what that other fellow said? He said, Yeah, I don't know if I got that much money. If I ain't, maybe Mr. Pratt will wait a day or two for part of it. This has been a bad month at my place, you coward. Boy, the mention of Pratt's name sure scares them, doesn't it? Yeah, they ain't living no life of ease, I can tell you that. No, sir, they're not, Jonah. Pratt must have a mighty powerful organization. I reckon we'd better watch ourselves close in dealing with him. You go back and tell Pratt I refuse to pay. I hope you realize what you're saying, Mr. Hill. I'm fed up. This has got to stop somewhere. Pratt and his whole outfit will rot and graft us. Tell him that for me. Tell him in just them words. Roy looks at the man before him. Here is a person who dares defy Fred Pratt and his orders. The first and only man. 
This man perhaps can be persuaded to give information that Roy, Dale, and Jonah are looking for. Roy remembers Pratt insinuated that the gang might trick them. He wonders if this man is on the level. He decides he has to take a chance. He stretches out his hand in friendship. Here's my hand, Mr. Hill. What? You're our kind of a man. You sure you are. Wait a minute. I don't get this. Mr. Hill, we're not members of Pratt's organization. Instead, we're trying to find someone like you, a a man who'll help us get enough evidence to send Pratt and his gang to jail. Mr., you may be lying and trying to get me killed by the gang, but uh, I'll go along with you. You come back here tonight, and I'll have records and evidence enough to send Pratt up for life. That's good enough for us. Mm, Mister, you're a man of steel, a fellow who can look the world in its eye. After dark. If there's a light on in my place, keep away. That means danger. But if it's dark, walk on in. Roy and his two partners have no way of knowing this crafty man who promised so much is a member of Pratt's gang, is in fact one of the men who dynamited the newspaper office and is now setting a trap. Roy sends Dale back to her hotel in Mineral City to confer with Bob Noble, the newspaper man whose office was dynamited. Mr. Noble, Roy thought it might be better if he didn't come here himself. The gang may be watching us, you know. Uh, they're tricky. They're smart. Well, we found this one man who will help us. And Roy says if you feel able, he'd like to have you come over to Indian Junction this evening and meet us at the Gold Nugget Cafe about 8. I'll be there if I have to crawl, Dale. Well, I hope when you get there tonight, we'll have a big story for your newspaper. Oh, Mr. Noble, Roy wanted me to tell you not to come into the cafe. Wait outside near our horses in case there's trouble. <laughs> Dale returns to Indian Junction from Mineral City, and as darkness falls, she joins Roy and Jonah. They wait outside the cafe, in the shadows, to make sure no one has followed them. The street is deserted. The air is quiet. I don't see any light in the cafe. No. Everything seems to be all right. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of the night I snuck up on an Indian teepee during the battle. I got within range, and I fired a rifle ball at it. Only to hear a yell I recognized is coming from Corporal John Dumphy. <laughs> the idiot's triangle head always did look like a teepee. <laughs> he should have kept it hid. What would you say, Jonah? I said he had Come on, head. come on. You know, a far different head than General Thomas Kenneth Rowe had. Why, we could we could have shot pool on top of the general's head <laughs> if he'd have let us. I say if he'd have let us. Fact is, we often talked about it. You know, but he was too picky. He was, eh? Well, he was uh, <clears throat> before he met me. See, that was the day he seen smoke signals and interpreted them as the Indians sent in a message asking for peace and walked right into their village. What happened? Oh, yeah, why, they wasn't signals at all. The Indians had just put on a pot to boil for their supper, so they cooked General Rowe. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they would have, but I shot a rifle ball through the pot and drained the water out before the general got well done. <laughs> yeah, sure, we were great pals after that, me and General Rowe. <laughs> better be quiet now. Let's have a last look around before we go into the cafe. Roy, Dale, and Jonah stand before the door of the cafe. No light shows from inside. Hill has told them the door will be unlocked. Roy puts out a hand, pushes at the door. The door opens. Roy walks inside cautiously. Dale and Jonah follow. No word is spoken. There is a tenseness about them, a feeling that all is not well. Suddenly, from out of the blackness, a voice calls. Stand up, Pat! Get out, three of them! Shots ring out, shots from more than one gun. The three partners drop to the floor and lie quiet, knowing they have walked into a trap. They recognize the voice that called to Pratt. It was Tom Hill's voice. At least two, maybe more of the gang are here, waiting in the darkness. They lie quietly for a moment, waiting for the gang to make the next move. We must have got him. I don't hear nothing moving. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. I heard him drop. Get out your flashlight. We'll go and see. The two evil men walk slowly towards the front of the gambling den, towards the spot where Roy Rogers and his two partners lie on the floor. The men come slowly, cautiously, nearer, nearer, guns in hand. They're within one step of Roy. He leaps to his feet, shouting, All right, Dale, Jonah, let's take him! (laughs) 
That yeah. takes care of these two. Yeah. I got their flashlight, Roy. Yeah, a hand-to-hand struggle without the benefit of sabers. Get to your feet, you two armors. Start moving. <laughs> the two gang members get off the floor. Their faces are battered, their clothing torn. Hate streams from their faces. Roy has their guns now and directs them toward the door, intending to take them to jail. As they pass a side door, it is flung open. Stand where you are! Stand where you are! Don't move. Drop those guns. We aren't in here to play. Have you got that pencil and paper ready? Well, hold on. Here comes a special surprise for you from Roy Rogers himself. Uh, Howdy, friends. This is Roy Rogers. I'm especially pleased to be able to extend a personal invitation to you from Dale, Trigger, and myself. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member of our Writers Club. Maybe you've heard about our Writers Club already. We've got several million members throughout the country, and our aim is to bring you lots of fun through honesty, loyalty, and friendship. And I'm sure you'll gain a lot of fun being one of our members. Of course, you'll get a beautiful membership card entitling you to all the rights and privileges as a Writers Club member. And you'll get an official badge to wear, too. Here's the big surprise. Every single member gets a big 16-page comic book in full color. This is our official Roy Rogers Writers Club book. It's packed with adventure about Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and me. And oh, yes, you'll get a full-color autographed picture of Trigger and me. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member, and if you'd like to be one, here are the details on how to join. Yes, friends, card, badge, comic book, and picture. All yours when you join the Roy Rogers Writers Club. And to become a member is so easy. Just take the top from one regular size package of any of the swell tasting post cereals. Mail the box top with only 10 cents and your name and address to Post, P O S T, Box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now write that down while you remember it. That's Post, Box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's all there is to it. Just one Post Serials box top, one dime, your name and address, and you're a member of the Roy Rogers Writers Club. Have fun. Join up today. Keep your hands up. Walk this way, out the side door. We'll have to do what he says, Dale and Jonah. These people giving you trouble, Mayor? Yeah, Sheriff, they was. Oh, so you're the mayor, are you, Mr. Hill? The mayor and the sheriff are members of the gang that controls Indian Junction. Pratt, I suppose you're the man behind the organization, the real leader. Step outside here. Keep those hands up. They robbed us, Sheriff. Then they tried to kill us. We're sure being framed, Roy. You'll find the money they took in this man's pocket. If you're talking about the license fees we collected, they're not in my pocket. They're in my bedroom. It's tied to my saddle. I'll go get it, Hill. You don't need to. Trigger, come here, fella. Trigger trots over to Roy's side. This is Roy's one chance. The three gang leaders are in control, their guns ready. They watch the horse with admiration as he comes up. Roy shouts an order. Take him, Trigger! Put him down, boy! Get him! Keep him away! Trigger's hoofs flash. He rears, strikes at the outlaws. They back away, find themselves against the building. So suddenly has this happened, they find their guns useless. All right, Trigger. Hold it, fella. What happened? I got here as fast as I could. Well, this is a story you've been wanting for a long time for your newspaper, Bob. These three can be booked for attempted murder as well as other charges. And those other charges will include a killing night before last. Sheriff Warner and me had nothing to do with that killing. Can you prove that? Talk to Pratt. The mayor and I were at your place when it happened. We were blowing up your newspaper plant. Now you've told me what I wanted to know, Mr. Sheriff. Hey, you're a smart operator, Bob, getting the confession that easy. They're used to bragging, Roy. They never know when to stop. Well, we've learned a lesson. We won't lose control of our town again. These men who betrayed the people that elected them to office are put behind bars. Roy, Deal, and Jonah ride back to the Double R Bar Ranch, where all is peace and quiet. Jonah, what's the matter with you? You look all in. You're not sick, are you? Yeah, well, no. No, but I just sort of had my heart set on getting my old buddy a job, that's all. Corporal John Dumphy. Oh, 
Oh, he's the man who can open a new deck of cards and deal himself five aces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the fella. Uh, he's out of work now, too. Now, look here, Jonah. Gambling's illegal. Oh, I know it is. See, I know it is. I just... Well, oh, well, never mind. I always long to have some diamond set teeth, that's all. Dale, I think I'm going to have to throw our good old friend Jonah back to the whale. <laughs> Hmm. Fact is, I'd do it right now, except I feel there's more excitement coming up, and I may need him again. We're gonna have a cowboy wedding When the sage is all a blue To the mountains we'll be heading For a sunny honeymoon Gonna drink in all the sunshine Along the banks of some cool stream Just laugh and play the live long day Build a cabin of our dreams We wanna hear guitars a-ringing When they play our wedding tune Down the aisle you'll find us swinging In the early part of June Within a year I have no fear A lullaby I'll prove We're gonna have a cowboy wedding When the stage is all a Folks, this is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Crinkle. The newest member of the family of Post Serials brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed each week at this same time with the Whipper Wills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. Produced and directed by Tom Hargis. Script by Ray Wilson and music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Ed Max, Nestor Piva, and Ralph Moody. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny way Happy trails to you 
Till we meet.